Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dan, I'm a product manager on the docs.microsoft.com team. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how you too can generate Java API documentation for your libraries. Uh, if you don't know what docfx is, I recommend you check out some of my earlier videos that are linked in the description. So make sure to watch them. You can read the blog posts. We have plenty of documentation that explains how to do this. So I will actually skip a lot of the setup pieces today and just focus on the Java aspect of things. So as you might know, there's various ways in which you can generate documentation for Java. The most popular one being Javadoc. So when you use Javadoc, you get the output that is structured in iframes, that is structured in a way that is very specific to Java API documentation. Now, that can be a little bit of a challenge if you decide to host your own site that looks a little bit different, or maybe you wanna reformat it or have custom templates. So docfx comes to your rescue. And lucky for you, we actually built recently a doclet that plugs into the Javadoc pipeline and ensures that you can generate documentation that is accurate, that is the same way that Javadoc produces, but in a new format. So let's get started. Before we get started here, I'm going to, and I'll open a new tab here. I'm gonna to go to my downloads folder. And in my downloads folder, I already have docfx downloaded. It's the zip file that comes from the docfx website. So if you click on download, you'll be taken to GitHub releases. Just grab the latest zip, that's good enough. Uh, I extracted it inside my docfx folder. So if I'm actually gonna do ls docfx, you'll see that I have a bunch of DLLs. I see uh, docfx.exe, and this is gonna be the executable that I'm running. And if you're running on a Mac OS or Linux machine, you can use mono to run the executable. So mono is the open source uh, .NET implementation uh, that runs across platforms. So that being said, one of the things that you need to have on your local machine is the Java SDK. So you can go to the Oracle website, download the Java SDK, have all the dependencies ready, and to check that, make sure that you can run Java. And if you run that command at your terminal, likely that you have it. Uh, similar with Javadoc. So if I just run that, you'll notice that I didn't specify any parameters, so obviously it will error out. But, so now you wanna generate a Java documentation. What do you do? So uh, get the source of your library. And for this demonstration, I'm gonna use the Azure Functions Java library. It's open source, it's on GitHub. Uh, you'll, if you go to a repository, you'll notice that uh, they have all the prerequisites there, all the source code. If I go to the SRC folder, I have all my standard Java artifacts, if you will. There is the main Java, there is a test, and I have the source files uh, that are necessary for the SDK execution. So how do I generate the actual documentation work? Well, number one is I wanna clone this locally. So I've already done the work. So if I go to downloads here, and I'm gonna clear my screen and I do ls, uh, you'll notice that I have the Azure Functions Java library already in. So if I go to ls Azure Functions Java library, I already have all everything that maps in the repository locally. And of course, you can run this in your own CI. So just the fact that I'm showing you locally in Mac OS doesn't mean that you can run it in Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions. So with this information present, now we have the library. What we do need to generate, and this is something that is specific to docfx, is that we are using YAML files for structured content. We're not actually dealing with raw HTML. You don't need to write all those styles by yourself. So that is what docfx does for you. But you need to provide docfx the structured YAML representation. You can't just feed it the javadoc output. So to do that, the doclet that we've built is called docfx doclet. Uh, and it's again, open source, it's on GitHub. You can download it, you can instrument it to the source, you can fork it and adopt it to whatever you need. But uh, there is a release that you can download. So you can go to the releases view and just grab the latest package with dependencies. That's the easiest to operate with. And you can go back to different versions if you feel like it, or there's any uh, issues that you encounter with the current release. Uh, and the readme here contains all the instructions that I'm gonna be showing you today. So if you ever wanna skip through the video and just go to the readme, you can just do that. You can plug this into your development workflow or you can run it standalone through Javadoc, uh, through the Javadoc CLI. And I'm gonna be do doing the latter today. Uh, so let's get back here to my uh, process. And I'm gonna uh, look at the terminal and look what I'm doing here. So uh, I'm calling javadoc, and this is a command that's split across multiple lines. So don't worry about you know the fact that you see all these uh, slashes at the end of the line. It just means that the command is split. Uh, I'm using javadoc. I'm using the standard UTF-8 encoding, so it's all Unicode. 
Then I'm specifying the Docklet pack, which in this case is the docfx docklet jar that I downloaded from GitHub. Uh, then I'm specifying docklet ID. And again, this doesn't change. It's com Microsoft docklet docfx docklet. Then I'm pointing the source path to the local source of the library that I'm pulling this in, which is Azure Functions Java Library SRC main Java. You don't actually need to specify, you know, the com Microsoft Azure, whatever the library is or whatever your library is. You just need to specify uh, you know, it ends at the Java fragment. Now, the output path is just the folder that you need to specify locally, and then sub packages is the actual package that needs to be documented. There is more parameters here that you can specify, and I realize that there's cases where you might want to exclude classes, and for, for that, there's specific functionality that you can use to exclude classes, exclude packages, and the readme goes into the details of that. But you don't need to do that really right now. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this command here, uh, just as is. Oh, looks like I need to step back one uh, level and I'm gonna run the command again. Uh, oh, they're still not there. Uh, I wonder what I did wrong. Um, it's probably because I am not in the right context because I was experimenting with this before. So I'm just gonna run the command. So what this does, it will generate the actual package information and the class information in the form of YAML files. So remember that I specified test data as the folder. So if I go back to Finder and I will go to downloads and go to test data, you'll notice that there's a bunch of YAML files. So all these YAML files contain all the information that's being pulled from the Java source code, all the comments, all the examples. It's not really readable if you open this by yourself uh, because it's YAML files. They're, they can be very large, it's very hard to understand the structure, but machines can interpret them relatively fast. So we're gonna leave them to that. Uh, now that we have the YAML files, how do we transform them into docfx HTML or you know something that you can then push to Azure Storage or Amazon S3? So to do this, I'm gonna step back here again to my uh, docfx experimental terminal and I'm going to, let's say, just use this folder for experiments. So I'm going to do mono. Remember, because I said docfx exe is not executable on Mac OS, but you can use mono to do, uh, to do that. And I'm going to do mono docfx and then docfx exe. Oh, right, because I need not to build it, but to initialize a new project. So I'm going to do init q. Uh, okay. So we've initialized the project, and what this means is now we have the basic scaffolding done. These are the uh, fundamentals of all documentation sites. This is the same thing that we do on docsmx.com. So we have things like TOC, we have index files, we have the docfx.json, which is the build configuration. So uh, with this, now we can take the files that we've just generated, and I'm gonna take all of these and copy them, and I'm gonna step back to my previous folder and I go to docfx project. This is the scaffolding that we just created. And here, index.md, I'm gonna leave it as is. Talk.yaml, I'm gonna move it to trash. And here instead, I'm gonna paste all the files that we've just generated, right? These, this is all the YAML files. And now going back to my terminal, now I can build the project and generate the HTML. So to do that, I will CD myself into the docfx project folder and all i need to do is just run the docfx command and docfx.exe all right so this will build the site and create the html files that you can then you know delegate to sending wherever you need to send them to and all right, so if I do ls, I'll see that there's a new folder called underscore site. This is the site folder that contains the HTML. So if we go back to my downloads and to docfx project and open site, you'll see that there's the logo SVG, the JSON, uh, articles, enter HTML, all the API documents that we just looked at uh, are HTML files. So if I open one of them, you'll notice that all the information that got pulled from the source code is here. But this is not really useful because this is a detached HTML that I cannot look at independently. So to do uh, the right thing, I'm gonna run docfx and then run the serve command and then site. So what this will do is this will generate a server that runs locally that you can access from your web browser. So I'm gonna go to localhost 8080 
And there you go. Now there is a docfx server running locally that contains API documentation. So if I go to uh, my API page, uh, there we go. So uh, you might adjust the links in the scaffolding because clearly they don't work correctly right now. But now I have the table of contents that contains all the information that I pulled from source code with the doclet. So I can go to any of those pages. I can see all the relevant information. I can link to individual sections that I can then share with anybody else. If you host this on say GitHub pages, uh, very convenient, very easy to manage. And don't be intimidated by the fact that the current theme, you know, you might not look like something that you want to have, or maybe you need to make adjustments. The YAML files are completely detached from your theme. So as you make adjustments to your themes, you don't need to change the YAML files. You just need to generate this once, fetch it to docfx and docfx will do the magic for you. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else that you need to do to generate API documentation for your Java code and host it with docfx. Until next time.